Yes, it's Robert Bruce, and we are back at the Barbs, the melting pot of culture and art. Got to see another amazing show, a play this time, but it wasn't just any play. To what's end, six different parts in the show, and there's so much to unpack. I can't wait to chat about it, and I've got a special guest right here to do it as well. At the Barbs, after seeing yet another amazing show, we got to see the play to what's end, and it was fantabulous. And it wasn't just me that went, I had an amazing guest as well. Now, you might know him from his original work, Haircut, or you might know him from, you know, Top Boy. We're talking noughts and crosses on the BBC. Mr. Kobe Adom, everybody. Shh, appreciate yeah. that. How you doing? I've got to give it to you. you know? I appreciate that. I'm good, bro. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm all right. I'm all yeah. Right. Went to the show yesterday. Yes. We're going to talk about it. Let's dissect it, man. Let's but get before into... we get there, though, mm -hmm. I want a little bit more on you, because I gave Go you on. the light intro, you yeah? know? Go on. That was a good intro. I can't lie. Yeah. I'm a bit gassed. Yeah. <laughs> Give one. us, like, a brief timeline of your career. OK. Um, I graduated from the London Film School in 2016-17, slash so top of 17. Um, and I graduated after making a short film in Ghana called House Girl. And then uh, my next short film after that was, uh, well, was completed two years later, which was halfway through 2018 called Haircut. And that was the short film that was, you know, sort of like the breakthrough, if you want to call it that. So then shortly after, three months after I made Haircut, I worked on season one of Noughts and Crosses, um, uh, directed some episodes of Top Boy, did season two of Noughts and Crosses, and I executive produced five short films with my production company, DBK Studios. So there's been a lot of work. We've tried, man. A lot of work, tried, a lot of work. Getting this, getting this work. <laughs> That's good. So everything has been film and TV. Correct. What about plays? You know what? I feel like theatre is a medium which is uh, hand in hand with film and TV. Like a lot of talent is, you know, and, and, and IP is taken from the theatre world. However, I just feel like they're just different mediums. Do you get what I mean? And I feel like for me to delve into that, there's so many theatre companies that do a great job. Do you get what I mean? So it's about more celebrating them and, you know, giving them what they need to keep going as mm -hmm. opposed to me trying to set that up as well. Yeah. You know what I mean? But there's other sectors I want to set up as well, whereas like, I need to pick my poison, you know, for mm -hmm. lack of better wording. <laughs> Have you been to Barbican before? I think so. You think so? I Why think do you think so? Because so? of these blocks, I recognise them. <laughs> do you know what I mean? It's like, I, feel, I think I've been here. I think I shot something here. I think so. But I know the Barbican. That Barbican is the Barbican, so... Yeah, what was yeah. your perception of the Barbican? What is the Barbican in your life? Obviously, film, TV, Barbican is such an iconic space. What is it? It's Barbican. <laughs> do you get what I mean? It's kind of like, it just is what it is. But I think in the same breath, it's like one of those... I know there's a lot of listed buildings around here. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And there's a massive part of... Because this is that sort of brutalist architecture, in which is, you know, was very popular in, in London at some stage, if you know what I mean, which, you know, as a storyteller, things like that stick with me, if you know what I mean. Those are the things I observe. So I guess that's kind of what I've got attached to Barbican, just that typical London. Yeah. Speaking about storytelling, though, we mm. went to a show, mm. an amazing show to what's mm. end. Did you know what you was coming in for? Nah, man. So when, like, you're coming to the show, you didn't know what to expect? At all, man. You know what? I'm just going to jump in. You know, I felt like, you know, it sounded interesting. Um, I didn't know what to expect. And actually, I'm glad I didn't, do you know what I'm saying to you? Because it had a bigger impact on me and a clearer impact on me, if I, if I should say. So we went six short individual mm. shows. Mm. I think they call it shows. Mm -mm. I didn't know. I thought we was coming to see one long Same. play. So six individual shows. And the way they constructed them, they all had the underpinning of, mm. I guess, South Africa, because mm -hmm. it was a South African production. Exactly. What was your, like, initial thoughts when you jumped in and you started watching the plays? I'll be honest, I never, I didn't know anything. I didn't know it was meant to be South Africa, but I shot Noots and Crosses both seasons in Cape Town. Oh. Yes, so I know South Africans very well. I know the accents, I know the mannerisms, I know it all. So after the first, second play, and then the third one, I was like, I guess these are all South African. Do you get what I mean? And Oh, so you didn't even know nah, at that point? No, okay. no, nah, nah, I just didn't do it. And I, I, to be fair, I was doing loads of travelling, but in the same breath, I think that it was good that I didn't again. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Because I feel like sometimes the best films I've watched, I didn't have a clue what I was w walking into. Like Project X, it was a comedy. I don't know if it, you've watched that before. But it's like, it's this 
hilarious comedy. I didn't have a clue about it. I wanted to watch a different film mm -hmm. and I just went in there and I laughed my head off because I just didn't <laughs> expect it. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So I feel like that impact level was, was good for me. Your perspective is interesting then. Mm -hmm. The fact that you filmed and shot to South Africa, you've mm -hmm. been there. Mm -hmm. What were the parallels you saw from the plays that we mm -hmm. saw to your time at South Africa? The people, do you know what I'm saying to you? Like South Africans are, are, are wonderful people. Do you get what I mean? There's, there's so much depth in them. Do you get what I mean? Even when you hear their sort of, because there's a lot of languages as well, and you know, sort of like tribal backgrounds have different languages and it's, all of them are really deep. Do you get what I mean? It's very spiritual, that place, South Africa. Do you get what I mean? And I feel like it, it, it's transcendent. Like even if you don't believe in the spirit realm, you'll feel it. Mm. And you'll start questioning like, oh, like, what is this about these people? Do you get what I mean? So yeah, like I, I'm, I'm, and because I'm, I'm a Christian, so I guess in terms of the spirit realm, I kind of understand it quite well, and I'm familiar in that, that, so I can enjoy it more. Do you know what yeah. I mean? I can consume it more. I can feel safe as I'm consuming it, even if it's different from my spiritual approach. Do you get what I'm saying? Speaking about the first player, mm -hmm. one thing that jumped out at me was creativity, because sure. it was a play. Mm -hmm and they're on typewriters, mm -hmm. but they're making music mm -hmm. with their voice and with the typewriters. Mm -hmm. Oh, my mind was blown. Mm -hmm. How did you see that from a creative point of view, like captivating? It's that beauty, isn't it? It's hand-eye coordination. So it's like you get the, the beauty of, of what you'd get from video games, do you know what I'm saying to you? But you still got the story behind it, do you know what I mean? On, so it's immersive, it's almost like immersive theater. Do you get what I mean? And I guess all, all the plays, in essence, had something to do with some kind of music or some sort of experience. Do you get what I mean? So I was very, very fascinated by that. But I wasn't shocked because, again, I've been to Cape Town. And if you see the kind of things people do there, in fact, it's not even just Cape Town, Ghana, where we're from. Do you know what I mean? If you go to the rural areas, you'll see them creating with close to nothing. And I think that's the beauty of art. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It's just like create with art it involves what you have at your disposal. Do you get what I mean? It's not trying to aim for the best. It's like making the best product of what you have. That's the best art. Do you know what I mean? So that's what I kind of got from that specific that page. Bit. You know what I'm saying to you? It's like making use of what you've got and invoking a, a, a creative response from myself and an emotional response as well, actually. Do you know what I mean? What was the emotional response? I don't know. It's just more sort of like, because it's, it's, maybe emotional is the wrong word, right? Yeah. But I was intrigued. I was engaged, you know what I mean? I wanted to watch, like, and maybe it wasn't emotional response, so I don't know what the emotion was, but it wasn't negative. Mm -hmm. It led to intrigue and engagement, do you get what I mean? And yeah, I think it's just, you know, like, I, it's in, it, it, it reminds me of interactivity, do you know what I'm saying to you? And I guess that's what, you know, that's, that's what I picked up on, that's what I observed, so. When you was in the audience here, mm -hmm. did you come to the show on your own? No, I came with a friend. You came with a friend, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. You and your friend, when you looked into the audience, what did it feel like? Like, did you feel like you and your friend were the only yes. you and your friend? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Really? Yes. Me what and my friend were the only me and my friend. Wise, though. Same. Is it? So look, I could be transparent. It's not a bad thing to say. I think that look, the room was full of uh, white middle class people. And mm -hmm. again, I'm, I'm I, I could call myself middle class now. Praise God. Do you get what I'm saying to you? But I come from a working class background. Do you get what I mean? Which. I carry like a badge. Do you get what I mean? I'm not ashamed of. Do you get what I mean? Like it's, it's a massive part of how successful I've been thus far because I've been true to it. So I feel like when I go into a room like that, judging by what I'm watching as well, do you get what I'm saying to you? It's kind of like, look, the plus side is because you've got to look at both sides of the fence. You know, it means that these people get an insight into a different world. Do you get what I mean? Where they can learn and educate themselves and use that back in reality. Do you get what I mean? But in the same breath, it's kind of like, well, you know, there could be maybe two or three other me's in the room. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And, you know, I don't know how, I don't know. Do you know what I mean? I, don't, I, I definitely felt it. That's one thing I will say. As soon as did I walked feel, in. Did you feel it? Yeah, it's like, it, look, a wind just blows at you and you're like, oh, snap. When I went, yeah, because <clears> I went on my own as well. Okay. So I got to serve and my, my audience was a little bit more diverse than okay. what you're saying. So wrong day but, then. <laughs> yeah, so you, you picked the day when yeah. it wasn't. What I found interesting was, mm -hmm. this play was so for me. Okay. So it made sense for me to be there. Sure. Even if I didn't feel like there were other me's in the room. And that's sure. age, race, and mm -hmm. all of that, although it was more diverse. Did you feel like this was a space for you as well, watching the art? Yes, in, in a sense. Do you get what I mean? Because I guess art is universal. I don't think it belongs to anybody. Even if it's based on your reality, I think the, 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 the point of art, in my opinion, humble opinion, is communication. Do you get what I mean? You're communicating something and a lot of the time that thing is not tangible. 
Do you get what I mean? So it's kind of like, again, I don't expect there to be just black people. Do you get what I'm saying to you? But I guess on my day, I was pretty shocked with the mm. fact that I was the only one, me and my friend. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It just didn't make sense. And I thought, what, well, is this a thing? Or, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. But I guess, look, like I said, and also though, look, I think in terms of the whole experience, it does matter because as you're w sort of watching black trauma on that stage, you know, and all the different plays and et cetera, is, you know, there's just some bits that you just feel like, I don't know, you know, if I'm performing this thing and I'm looking in the audience, right, a bit of melanin here and there will go a long way, do you know what I mean? And encouraging me to continue to tell the story, if you know what I mean. Um, but in the same breath, like I said, I don't want to take away from the part of art and, you know, that is supposed to connect with new people. Like, I'm, when I made Haircut, for example, I got a guy in Germany who DM me on Instagram, like, this is one of the best short films I've ever watched, and I didn't have a clue what they said from beginning to end. Oh, wow. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Because obviously that's South London colloquialism. Right? Whereas this guy's from Germany, I don't know where in Germany, but you know, he's able to watch this stick up in a barbershop with people speaking like, you know, they're from the hood and they still were able to connect to it. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So I guess for me, that's the beautiful part of that situation. Do you know what I mean? So where did you connect with, especially the first scene? So this is when the guys are on typewriters mm -hmm. and they're explaining the story of mm -hmm. being evicted from mm -hmm. their properties mm -hmm. with no warning, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's so musical because they're making music out of the typewriters and their mm -hmm. voice. How did you connect to that? I love music, and that story is very relatable. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Everyone's been through eviction, do you know what I mean? In, in whatever, whether it's the actual eviction from your house or something symbolic of that, do you get what I mean? And I think that for me, merging those two mediums together is art again, do you get what I mean? It's like, it's juxtaposition again, but also is alignment, how? Because music is, you know, sort of a release, but it is also quite sorrowful. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So it's kind of like, it, 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 for me, what I like about it is that it didn't, it wasn't sort of like clear cut, like this is what we're trying to do and this is what we're trying to say. It's an exploration and that's where interactivity comes into it. Because me as an audience member can then start selecting how this is affecting me. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Or how, what I'm going to take away from this. Do you get what I mean? So I guess that sort of like open that aspect to it and, and, and you know, multidisciplinarian approach, right? Was well, quite refreshing. Do you get Because I'm a filmmaker. I go on and say, I know what I'm doing. I know who to talk to you, boom, boom. It's quite straightforward. I try to obviously use music and do such similar things, but I think watching that inspires me to push further with my art form. Okay. Do you get what I'm saying to you? How can you open this up and get more, what's the word? sort of like unique moments. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? Like that essentially. So it's like, I'm glad I watched it because it's opening my own mind. Because look, my job, I need to stick to the science, not stick to it. I need to hold myself accountable to the principles and the science to be of a certain quality. But the detriment of that is that the um, magical part of it, the raw part of it, right? The transcendent part of it gets affected. So it's like watching stuff like that can then open your brain again after you've already really solidified the science mm. and the principles, you get what I mean? So yeah, man, that's my biggest takeaway from that. What was magical for you about this play then? The first one or any of them? And let's go across the board now. Should I open it up? bits from, yeah. The magical part was um, the performances were blinding. That's one thing I will say. I think uh, performing arts in South Africa is, is out of this world, man. You know what I mean? Like you look at the, the people at like Masali Baduza and Thuso, who were just when the Woman King, for example, do you know what I mean? And they also have their own blood and bone TV shows and stuff. Like their, their performances are magical because they, they, they can be very intense people. But, but when you have that full range of intensity, you can then gauge it. Do you know what I'm saying? You can then use that to craft, if you know what I mean. And that's what I saw on the stage. It's like she was standing in this big pot and you know, it was whatever. And then she gave the food to this guy. And then more time, I could be shallow and say, I don't have a clue what's going on there. Do you know what I mean? Because- But how did your mind perceive it then? Is how suffering is, do you know what I'm saying to you? But it's also is how, how pain and suffering is almost perceived, how pain and suffering is received. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And it's like, look, don't get it twisted. She got in and out of that pot five times. And after the first time we knew she was suffering. Do you get what I mean? So I started to get a sense of duty, a sense of obligation a sense of this, a sense of that, do you get what I mean? But then by the end of the play, that subservience, that submission was juxtaposed and she put her foot, her foot in his food. Mm. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And what I got from that as a message is kind of like, look, 
I'm prepared to suffer for you. I'm prepared to do what I need to. But then at some stage, you have to try and alleviate this pain for me. Otherwise, the resentment is going to come in or I'm going to boss up, you know what I'm saying to you? So if you're not going to come save me, my hot fo foot, I'm going to cool it off in your food. Like, do you get what I'm saying to you? It's just that kind of... And that was juxtaposed with the rest of the, of, of the whole play. Do you get what I mean? So the magic in that for me was just how well I got that message from performance. Mm. No one said anything I've just said. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It was all just based on the two people in the back crying and singing beautiful, again, music. As I feel like that music is, is always a good spark for magic. Do you know what I mean? Because music, you can't see music. Do you know what I'm saying? So you can just hear it and you can just feel it. Do you get what I mean? So it's like that juxtaposed with what she was doing with her performance and how good she, she was selling the pain and et cetera. I just think it was brilliant. That's my favorite one. That was your favorite one? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, it was my favorite one, but the one that triggered me the most as well, because, you know, I just feel like, I don't know if this is on purpose or not, but I just feel like, for example, the girl in the white who was in the pot, I just felt like her outfit was pretty revealing and I didn't know if that was necessary. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It's like, look, I've grown up in a house of women, you know, like my mum and my sisters. Obviously my dad is around, but in terms of the household I grew up in, it was that, do you get what I mean? And, you know, I've got a lot of female friends. So it's kind of like, look, as I'm watching this thing and it is a good play and it is going deep and it's, I've just given you a message, you know, a layered message, but does it need to be so provocative in a sexual mm -hmm. manner? Was that on purpose? That's the questions I guess I would ask, you know, just for the sake of conversation, right? But it did make me feel uncomfortable. Is me feeling uncomfortable a bad thing? I'm not sure. I'm just, that's just the, the feeling I got from it. Do you yeah. get what I mean? Because as she's suffering, do you know what I'm saying to you? I don't, I don't really think that should be sexualized at all. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, that's me. And that's yeah. why art is art because one person doesn't make art, do you know what I'm saying to you? So that was kind of like my, you know? I don't think from the show that we can't deny it. its origins in South Africa. We touched on it a little bit, but how has Africa affected the whole world? Because we look at it, you were singing that like before we started. That's your favorite album right now. I've been singing it for the past two, three months, mate. <laughs> like, I mean, since it come out, I ain't stopped. <laughs> and African culture has been quite huge in your Massive. work. How is it sort of influencing the media we're taking in? We just watched Woman King, Black Panther's also going to be coming out. The rise of African influence on mainstream media, how do you see that from your perspective? It's the be on end all of what I do. Aside from God, God is the be on end all. But after that, you know what I mean? Africa is massive in my endeavors. Like I'm moving to, I'm moving to Ghana, mm. right? I'm moving to Ghana because my long-term goals in this thing belongs there, do you know what I mean? It belongs in Africa, sorry, like, you know, as a continent. Um, when I was still in film school, I was looking for a mentor for my graduation term. I'm not going to bother saying any names. But one of the biggest producers in UK history, I guessed his email address and he called me in and he actually gave me advice, right? And he was like, look, I've been making all kinds of films. I've been Oscar nominated as one Oscar since the 80s. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And you don't really need to try and make what I'm making. Do you get what I mean? You kind of need to tell the stories that you know inside out, the things that you've been through and the people closest to you have been through and take us for a roller coaster of emotions in those stories and you'll be successful. Do you get what I mean? And what I got from that was how valuable African stories are. Do you get what I mean? Because at the end of the day, they haven't been told by the right people in the history of cinema or TV for that matter um, because of access, right? But now with, with the level of access, you know, there is in, in certain ways of looking at it, the, the authors of these stories have changed. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And it actually does across many disciplines, music, film, because you mentioned someone like Ashaka, he hardly speaks English in these songs. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying to you? But now he's got sellout shows in London. And, you know, people in America are blowing his music left, right, center, and I feel like, because it's new. Do you get what I mean? I feel like the, 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 the people that have had the access before have basically exhausted all the storylines, do you know what I'm saying to you? And made it over and over and over again. Do you know what I mean? It's quite a, it's quite a known model in Hollywood. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like, well, what could we remake? Now, whether we call it the same thing or, you know, make it something else. So I think Africa as a place, the value's gone up through the roof. Like you might look at gold, diamonds, cocoa, all of the raw stuff as the only value Africa, Africa has. But as valuable as those things are, I feel like African stories are the most valuable because it's intangible. No one can Why steal that it? from you. Why no one can it? steal that from you. It's in your, it's in your grant your ancestor spirits, do you get what I'm saying to you? And can be transferred to you through a form of communication with your parents or with other family members to give you extra context on how you want to tell 
this African story. Do you get what I mean? And you've got the front foot because no, the majority of the people that's going to watch this or who have access to watching cinema have never seen this in their life. Told to this step. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So I feel like Africa or African content is changing the world. It is. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's like new audiences are tapping in because it's so lit. Do you know what I'm saying? It's just so lit. Like, I, I, can't, I can't describe how happy, privileged, gassed, I, don't, I can't fall short of good adjectives for how happy I am that I'm African. In fact, I'm so happy I'm going in. <laughs> do you get what I mean? It's like a badge of honour. Like, do you know what I mean? So it's like, that's heavy on my work for sure, right? Like, everything I've made has had Africans in it. You know what I mean? Like, um, my first ever short was about a documentary on my little sister who's African, in the family, African. Um, then I made a film called Closure. I casted Adelayo Adedayo in there. And a girl called Nicolette Corte, you know, a Nigerian and a Ghanaian girl together from a foster home. I made House Girl after that in Ghana, about a British girl going to Ghana for the first time, or a half British, half Ghanaian girl going back to Ghana for the first time and experiencing that. And then I made Haircut after that. The barber's Jamaican, the other barber's Nigerian. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's like, in the feature film that I'm making, you're going to get Polish characters. You're going to get every... It's like the melting pot mm -hmm. of culture. Do you get what I mean? And, you know, yeah, I just feel like uh, uh, cultural full stop is important, but Africa, because I'm African, I don't know if I'm biased. You really res So you really resonate with shows like Yes. That. Do you know what I'm saying to you? I love it. And, I, and I'll be honest with you, when I went to Cape Town to, sh to work, I'd never been there before. And in my head, it was just Africa. And it's just Africa. But when you go there, you realise that it's not just Africa. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It's like West Africans and people from Southern Africa, or if we want to focus on South Africa, are two different types of humans. Mm -hmm. Mentality different. Like, even though we're both black, we don't even look the same. Do you get what I mean? Like, if you take your time to really observe this, we don't look the same. So it's because it's like, I always have this big issue when in big high-end TV or, or films, Something set in Nigeria, Ghana, Senegal, boom, 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 let's shoot in Cape Town. So all the extras are going to be South African. Do you get what I mean? There's yeah. a cultural specificity there that's been thrown in the bin. Like, would you shoot a scene in, I don't know, The Crown set in London and Russia? Got you. Got you. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, so it's yeah. kind of like, for me, like I'm a big advocate of those African specificities and details and what I do. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Because I see what's been done elsewhere without criticising those people, I now see I've got a responsibility. Do you get what I mean? Because mm -hmm. story is not just in structure and science, as I said. What re That's when you have a, a film and a story people can engage with. But to change someone's perspective in life and to make them grow is in the detail. Do you get what I'm saying to you? It's like a virtual reality experience. You have to build this so much so that they can even feel that they can smell it. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Like, that's how detailed you've got to be. Like. Like, if you watch a film like Goodfellas, the reason why pe that, that film was made the year I was born, it was, it was, it was made in 1990, people still talk about it today. That's 32 years. Why? Martin Scorsese is from Brooklyn, right? And he's got Italian heritage. So when he's telling this story about a community in Brooklyn full of Italian gangsters, you love it. You see all the mannerisms. You see how they all stand around. You see the formation. You see the hierarchy. You see the psychology. You see it all. Do you get what I mean? And I feel like Africa right now is so dominant in its offering. If we're able to get that right, you know what I'm saying to you, and get that detail on our content, that it is an endless pot of success, mm -hmm. joy, the lot. Do you get what I'm saying? And like I said, look at music. You know, the like, Wizkid, Burner Boy, Ashaka, they're just themselves. They just do what they want, say what they want. You might not be in, been, have been accepted before, but now it is. It's mainstream. It's been accepted by the world as well. It's mainstream. It's so interesting to see. Now America's interested. Now yeah. Diddy's interested. Now Jay-Z's interested. Do you know what I mean? Now Beyonce's going to do a tune with um, Ghanaians. And do you get what I mean? It's a, it's a beautiful time, man. And I don't think it's ever happened before. So it's kind of like, wow. And that's why I like the diversity of the audience mm -hmm. who came to the show. Because everyone's buying into African culture. Mm -hmm. It's something that I've known and loved and celebrated. Mm -hmm. And even seeing different sides and different aspects. Like when... I watched the uh, Weeping Whips mm. part of the show mm -hmm. when they were making almost music but acting and theatre with the whips, mm. no words. Mm. I've never ever seen anything like that before. Mm. And it reminded me of martial arts. Yeah. Randomly, like it mm. reminded me of martial arts. Mm. Was there anything either from that scene or from the whole play in general that just reminded you of different aspects of life completely disconnected to 
your discipline. Yeah, the spiritual, the, the spiritual realm. Do you know what I'm saying to you? Is that again? It's like, you know, music is very spiritual. Do you get what I'm saying? Um, like you said, like they're using very tangible things to make music. Do you get what I mean? It's like, it's like you can make music out of anything. You know, people beatbox to do, do all of that kind of stuff. But what I get from what I watched is how they literally just made music out of nothing. Do you get what I'm saying to you? They literally just made it work, you know? And, and I think that that goes to show how spiritual music is. And that goes to show the point that I started with early on in this chat is that art is based on what you have access, access to. Do you get what I mean? It's like, you take God out of art, you're, there is no art. Do you know what I'm saying to you? And using what you have access to is trusting that God knows what he's doing. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So let's just say, for example, you're about to make something, you're gonna look for more money. You've, you've defeated the purpose already. Do you get what I mean? You've defeated the purpose already. If you wanna make something and God says, this is what you have, right? Go forth and do that. And that's exactly what I've done, right? I've made haircut, it was a 14 grand budget. I shot in two days, mm -hmm. right? I was almost nominated for a BAFTA. Do you get what I'm saying to you? But the, I've seen shorts with budgets of 120 grand. Do you get what I'm saying to you? So, so for me, your resources this is whatever the resources is. And I think that's the biggest thing I took away from this. It's just sort of like, this was amazing with what they had in front of them. Not all singing, all dancing. This wasn't in the National Theatre with things spinning and lights doing this and that. It was just at the Barbican, a nice intimate stage. Do you know what I'm saying to you? With an intimate crowd, with hardly any utensils. And look at all the entertainment, all the, 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 the transcendence, all the... Do you know what I mean? Like, look at how much you evoked mm -hmm. from that. Do you get what I mean? So it's like watching this mean really solidified what art is for me. One part of the play as well was the whole copyright mm. scene. And the guy was mm -hmm. using the copyright, talking about paper. I thought mm. it was going to be an environmental thing. Yeah. But it really wasn't that. But before we dig into it, mm -hmm. it got me thinking, what technological advance here mm -hmm. has changed your life the most? I think for me, it would have to be contactless pay. Because <laughs> if you think about it, we always yeah. just have to carry cash it's around. Because yeah, yeah. they obviously said it in the um, in the aspect of the copy, what's it, what do you call it, a copywriter? Well, photocopier. Photocopier. That's photocopier. Like, I forgot earlier, that's yeah. what I was in. The photocopier mm -hmm. makes it so easy to mm -hmm. waste paper. Mm -hmm. And it randomly made me think, Apple Pay is making me so easy to waste money because it's so easy exactly. and so accessible. Is there anything Technology-wise, that has really impacted you from, you've seen like, raw they introduced this thing and look at what's happening now. The internet. The internet. Yeah, okay, so you, was, you, under, you understood life pre-internet. Precisely. Yeah. That's our generation. Do you know what I mean? Like, we started off with dial-up when you're on MSN and then someone calls you, you can't respond. Do you know what I'm saying <laughs> to you? It's like, that's how we started. And I studied, I studied media studies in college. And also I studied it in Bruno University as well and we studied things like globalization, like the world becoming one place and et cetera. And today, in today I'm taking meetings from America on Zoom. Mm. Like my whole calendar next week is meetings in America. So do you know what I mean? It's from 4 p.m. to what, 10 or something, which is a different time zone. But back in the day, you can't do that. You have to fly to LA. Do you know what I'm saying to you? So mm. I feel like the internet, I don't want to narrow it down in, within that realm because the internet as a whole was hard. the turning yeah, point. Okay. Do you know what I'm saying to you? It was the turning point for everybody. Like, my mum, you know, said something to me one time and she was like, no one's smarter than you. People just use Google. I promise you. And guess what? What did I do? I just Googled everything. So it was like, okay, for example, how did I get into film? Let's go through that really quickly, right? So I remember I was reading a book on film lighting, right? Um, and there's a quote in there that I'm going to share the quote because it's a great one. And it says, the day you're, you're not scared at work anymore is the day you need to quit. Right, so I put down Twitter. This was back in like 2012. I just tweeted it. I put Alan Davio there. He's the cinematographer on ET with Spielberg, right? And I just tweeted that. And then after I tweeted that, this film conference tweeted me back like, "Hey, Alan Davio's gonna be here. Do the day you should come." Me being, you know, I just finished uni. Don't really know what I'm doing in my life. I'm like, yeah, cool. I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna use whatever money I've got. I'm gonna go to this conference. It was at that conference that I met a cinematographer, a world-renowned one. And I asked him, how do I get into this? Like, I'm in Hollywood here. I've seen you like this set. It's giving me goosebumps. This is what I want to do. Like, how do I get into this? And he goes, London is the film hub of Europe, right? So start there, find a film school, and see how you get to. What did I do? Went back to my hotel room, film school in London, and what came up? London Film School, and the rest is history. 
I've gone there, I've studied there, I've got my masters and everything's, do you get me? So it's like, without the internet, I didn't have access. Mm -hmm. So for you being in film and TV, you spoke about the science a little bit, to seeing a show like this, mm -hmm. do you think it's important to see different sort of art mm -hmm. to influence your own creativity? One million percent. Like, um, I did a development course called Modern Tales after I graduated from film school and it changed me as a filmmaker. It was after that course that I then made haircut, but it, sh it showed you... So basically what we did was week by week, we look at our idea, our concept of the film that we want to make, and then we put it into different art forms. Like it, what if it was an art exhibition, right? Or what if it was this or what if it was that? Do you get what I mean? Because there's different styles of storytelling. Like again, mine is very rigid because it's based on communicating with as many people as possible. So it has to stick as close as possible to this formula that has been, been used for stories as far back as Aristotle. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying to you? In order to achieve what I need to achieve, but also there's the other side to it, where is like, how do I make this near and original? So without re releasing myself from the shackles of that discipline, do you get what I mean? It's like, I won't be able to inhale like, all the creativity that's available in this world, like the things that rules and principles can't achieve. Do you get what I'm saying to you? Again, I've used the word serendipity. Have I said serendipity in this? No, I haven't. I said transcendency. That's my favorite <laughs> word, yeah. <laughs> so serendipity, do you know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. and what is that? Serendipity is the space where it is above you. You didn't, you know, try and do this thing. You know, you're just creating and this thing happened and you allowed it to be. Do you get what I'm saying to you? And I feel like to observe that bit, to allow... That comes from taking in different... Thank you very much. Media. Do you get what I mean? Like, yeah. because it sharpens your eye. Like, you kind of see different things and so then you then spot this in your own work and it's like, oh yeah, that does work. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, theatres, I think it's very important to go to plays, right? I don't go to that many, I'll be honest, but of late, I've been going to more because my little sister loves plays, mm -hmm. right? I've been doing that. Um, there's, there's sort of like, what else? Podcasts are quite good. They're, they're art as well. People don't understand the mm -hmm. art of conversation. Do you get what I mean? It's very key and important. Do you get what I mean? And conversation is multifaceted, do you know what I mean? You're also creating, do you know what I mean? It's, it's still mm -hmm. art, so it's like, yeah, 100%. And actually, I'm on a journey right now of expanding, do you know what I mean? Like, exactly, the kind of things that I take. And I've been listening to classical music recently. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I packed in the drill, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. All right, Kobe, mm -hmm. from your time at the Barbican, and seeing to what end, how would you sum it all up in three words? Not necessarily the play itself, but your experience at the Barbican. Colossal. I don't know if that's bad or good, by the way. It's not an insult. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's just, that's the word that comes to me. Colossal, um, grand. Do you get what I mean? And um, heritage. Those are the three words that come to me. I could explain, but those are the three words. Thank you very much for being at the Barbs, coming to the Barbican, nice. seeing the player show. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. did. And it's been wicked just to see your perspective and mm. insight from being in the creative field, but something mm. slightly left to what we went to go and view yeah. and seeing how your mind opened up to it, man. Sure. It's wicked. I yeah. did, and I'm glad I got invited. Yeah, thank mm. you very much. Mm. Cheers.